Welcome back to another Pro Tools tutorial and in this video we're going to be having a look at pre and post roll. So pre and post roll can be enabled from the transport window and you can see here that at the moment there's a zero value in both of these fields. So before we get into that I think it's important to understand exactly what pre and post roll are. So here's an example of uh, a short section of voiceover. Let me just play this to you. It's not overly exciting but here we go. Hello this is the start of a voiceover and this is the end of the voiceover. Really imaginative stuff there. So that's a, a recording which is incomplete. So let's say for example we've recorded those two sections and we've either made a mistake in the middle that we want to redo or we've missed out a section and we want to uh, just record it in amongst the other material. So firstly I might make a selection that encompasses the range which I want to actually re-record and of course it's very useful whenever you're dropping into a recording to actually be able to hear the content before and after so that you can hear it a little bit more in context whereas at the moment if I run this it's purely going to play the edit selection so this is where pre and post roll come in so if we go to the transport window and let's put a pre roll value in uh, I'll just guess let's say four seconds whenever I type it and then press return you can see that it's automatically enabled so when this is not highlighted in green pre-roll, even if there's a value there, pre-roll isn't actually active, you have to actually click the pre-roll indicator in order for it to be on. I'll do the same with post-roll, again I'll just estimate, I'll go with 4 seconds again. And now if I run that same section, it will pre-roll, as in playback what's on that track, for 4 seconds leading up to the punch point, then it'll make the recording and it'll drop out of record, at which point it goes into the post-roll value, so in this case it's the same 4 seconds, and it'll run the audio on the track uh, for that duration. So Let's just have a look at that. Hello, this is the start of a voiceover. And this is the end of the voiceover. So when I actually record enable this track, what's going to happen is it'll play the same range you've just heard there, except once it reaches the selection point, it will drop into record automatically. And then afterwards, when it reaches here, it will drop out, allowing us to preview this, make the recording and also hear this. So I've got a mic connected. I'm just going to make this recording now. So pre and post roll are both enabled. We've got a sufficient value in there that covers both the start and end uh, sections of audio. Let's give it a go. Hello, this is the start of a voiceover. This is the section which I've dropped in. The voiceover. Okay, and one thing which was obvious there is that there was a little bit of latency when the recording dropped out. You didn't quite hear the very start of this section. How quickly that happens is somewhat dependent on the audio interface you're using and the buffer settings in the session. So we did actually not hear that very first part of the uh, outgoing voiceover, but hopefully the recording is fine. So let me just listen to this. I'm just going to disable pre and post roll temporarily. Have a listen to that. Hello, this is the start of a voiceover. This is the section which I've dropped in, and this is the end of the voiceover. Okay, so that's worked fine, and pre and post roll enabled us to do that. Now let's just have a look at a couple of other things that you can do, or different ways to enable pre and post roll. Uh, I might just take this music track as an example. I think there's some volume automation on this, so I'll just switch the automation off. Okay, so it's basically just a drone. Let's say that I wanted to, you know, make a selection here, I was going to drop in. So previously I just typed a value in here, and then enabled pre and post from here. The shortcut to enable or disable both of them together is Command and K. So you can see that just toggles them on and off. Just going to point you towards the top of the edit window here in this time-based ruler. These little flag indicators represent pre and post roll. When they're white, pre and post roll are switched off. If I toggle them back on, Command K, you can see that they go yellow. Whenever they're yellow, then pre and post roll are active. So another way which I can change these values is to just drag these indicators in the time base ruler so you can see as I shift that back the pre-roll moves and that's quite useful because it lets you easily see exactly where it's going to start so if I want the pre-roll to start where this audio file begins I can just take it back to there and I can do a similar thing with the post-roll so determine exactly where the post-roll will end. As with many things in Pro Tools there's yet another way of doing it and the other way is if you once you've got the edit selection hold down the option key and then just click before the edit selection and you can see that sets the pre-roll so I'll just do that again, click somewhere else the pre-roll changes, it basically repositions this to represent where I've just clicked 
and same thing at the end of the selection so to determine the post roll value once again hold down the option key click wherever we want it has to be after the edit selection and then that will govern where the post roll value now is one final thing which springs to mind when we're talking about this is that in the time based ruler once again keeping the option key held down once again if i reposition these you can see that they automatically um, both match each other's value so if we had initially one there and one very close so clearly different pre and post roll values holding option and just clicking or moving one of them sets them to the same value and lets you move them in unison so it's maintaining the same pre-roll value as the post-roll value and moving them out both together. And just one final point about this. Let me just put in another couple of values. So let's go with two second pre-roll and we'll go with a five second post-roll. Okay, the six, seven, eight and nine keys on the alphanumeric keyboard. So not on the numpad, but at the top of the main keyboard. Well, they come into play here. So if I press the six key, that will play up to the edit selection by the pre-roll value. The seven key will preview from the start of the edit selection by the post-roll value. So it's gonna run for five seconds in this case. And number eight previews up to the edit selection end by the pre-roll value. Okay, and finally number nine, you can probably guess what this is, previews from the edit selection end by the post-roll value. And so these simple shortcuts, which will work whenever Command's Focus is enabled here, can be very useful across the course of recording and editing a project. So that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.